Whether you're driving to the mall or across state lines, we've all seen this sign before. And if you're like me, you'll look down at your odometer and notice that once again, you're going way too fast. But I've always wondered, is there really an aircraft overhead checking my speed? And if they really are up there, what are they actually gonna do to stop me? Somebody stop me! Speed limit enforced by aircraft signs can be found in most states across the US. But the sign itself is pretty vague. The California Highway Patrol began testing the system in the 1960s because California has long stretches of highways that allow for frequent speeding. It would take nearly 20 years to implement the practice. And in 1981, aircrafts were used alongside with ground units for speed enforcement and aerial observation. There are two ways that officers theoretically enforce the speed limit from the skies. First, and most often, is with helicopters. Most of the time you won't see them, as they generally hover 12,000 to 15,000 feet in the air, but they can fly lower to get better visuals of speeders. Small planes are also used in a similar fashion. So how does aerial speed enforcement work? Monitored zones are marked with a thick white sign near the speed limit enforced by aircraft sign and are capped with a finish line set at the end of the zone. Two officers, a pilot and a spotter fly over a marked zone. Once in the zone, the spotter uses a specifically designed stopwatch to clock the car's speed. Once a helicopter spots a speeding driver, law enforcement officers will then radio down to a patrol car to pull you over and cite you a ticket. However, because most of the time drivers don't see aircrafts overhead, many assume these signs are bullshit, and they might be onto something here. We don't necessarily set up as many specific speed enforcement details as we did 10 or 15 years ago, predominantly because the advent of LIDAR. Jim Andrews, a California Highway Patrol pilot, told KQED in a 2016 interview. LIDAR is an aerial mapping technology that measures a vehicle's speed by sending out two laser pulses and calculating the difference in time it takes to detect the pulses of light reflected from the target, aka your car. There's another reason that aerial monitoring has taken a back seat. And that's money. Watching every road at all time has enormous costs, and most counties simply can't afford it. Typically, an aerial enforcement program involves a pilot and a spotter overhead in an aircraft to time vehicles, and several cruisers on the ground to pull people over and issue tickets. That's quite the crew to issue a single ticket at a time. It was never cost effective for helicopters to go out and loiter over a section of freeways, says Andrews. Take Virginia, for example. In 2000, the Virginia State Police started using aerial traffic enforcement. As of 2018, there were 425 speed enforced by aircraft signs. But actual aircraft patrols have reduced dramatically. Why? It cost Virginia State Police $150 an hour to fly planes. And that doesn't include officer salary. Between 2009 and 2011, Virginia State Police flew only five missions and issued roughly 20 speeding violations. The California Highway Patrol is in the same boat. Small planes used to go up on speed patrols once or twice a day. Not so much anymore. When asked how many of the 1 million tickets came from the aerial division, whether that number was closer to 10 or 10,000, California Highway Patrol press officer Daniel Hill admitted it was closer to 10. Just because there isn't a watchdog overhead at all times doesn't mean you should go all speed racer on highways. If you are gonna go above the speed limit, remember, you're speeding at your own risk. 